Here we go. I'd like to welcome everybody to the November New Ulm Human Rights Commission meeting. We have a guest today, Police Commander and County Commissioner-elect Dave Borkert. Uh, Mr. Borkert, I hope will ha help address the commission on some of the questions we may have um, on our agenda about the community law enforcement initiative. Uh, you have a little bit, you're number three, so I'll keep you posted. Uh, can we get an approval of the October minutes? So moved. I get a second. second. Do I get to bang it for this one? You bang away. So approved. <laughs> uh, actually, it was quicker than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Commander, could you step up to the podium, Dave, please? If they want to take it away from me and they say I use it too much. <laughs> <laughs> my so a week or so ago, I had uh, spoke with Dave about what he thought might be a good direction or something that we could focus on as a committee in the coming year. It's something that he comes into contact with on a daily basis or he feels is important um, for us to work on. And one thing during the course of our conversation that came up would be possibly doing a community uh, law enforcement interaction initiative to help um, do you want to go on with that <laughs> to help with uh, community interaction with law enforcement in regards to uh, individuals with mental health disorders or issues uh, along with uh, chemical dependency issues community relations type of right and yep sure okay should I just proceed sure. <laughs> so um, Chairperson and members of the committee, my name is Dave Borkert. I'm a commander with the Nome Police Department. And it, this is something that I've talked with Jackie and, and various members of the committee and just the community at large. I, you know, we, we try to, with our department, we really try to be transparent. And as far as what our goals are, you know, we try to sustain measurable goals. And you can imagine nationwide, you know, it's even statewide. There's some challenges right now with law enforcement that we need to overcome. Um, and I, I really sincerely believe that a big part of that is just communication and, you know, kind of explaining where we're at right now and where we see ourselves going. Um, we have a meeting on December 8th, and I have some um, individuals that are going to be, be joining me at the Law Enforcement Center. It's at 1030 a.m. And, you know, certainly everyone's invited, the community's invited to attend that as well. And what we're moving forward with is having some, um, there's a mobile crisis um, center. They'll actually come out, meet us at, essentially at the person's residence when we're having issues with mental health and even chemical dependency. So I, I really think that that's, a, that's an important resource that's available for us. And I'm, I'm excited to see you know, how, you know, where that's going to end up as far as us utilizing it. Something that's available that we can utilize as of right now. Um, it, it's available to us again. It's a free service. It's a, a service that the con uh, county actually contracts with. It's, it's part of a larger 15 county um, service area available right in Mankato. And I, again, as far as a lot of our calls that we're getting, um, there's a lot of mental health issues that, that are at play. And I think a lot of stuff that we're seeing even statewide and nationwide, maybe that some of those challenging or even violent encounters, if you really summarize it, I think, you know, there's kind of a backbone. It, it involves mental health and, and chemical dependency. So that's, that's something just as far as reporting to the community and reporting to this, this uh, group, that's, I think that's, that's important. And I'm, you know, I'm very, very pleased with the progress with regarding that. Any questions with that? That's essentially that's my report. But is there any questions that maybe I didn't cover as well or something that's I missed something. You said you were meeting with who at ten thirty? Where there's there's several individuals um, that are it's gonna be a probation director, it's gonna be Brown County attorney, certainly the city attorney's invited to that as well. Um, we have individuals from um, 
Brown County Family Services. Basically, okay. just probably decision makers that law enforcement works with when we're we're making a lot of these determinations with with mental health, mm -hmm. and all of them are going to be there. What what we're really looking at, and we're going to have member, we're going to have a representative there from the um, New Horizons Crisis Center, and they're the ones that this Mobile Crisis Center is actually part of that. That's actually the, the New Horizons Crisis Center is actually the umbrella. And then um, they have like, you know, different segments of that. And the Mobile Crisis Center is something that I think would really relate. That's something that we could really use. And when I say we, talking about area law enforcement, local law enforcement. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with a really good training plan something you know something so that the officers are very well aware of it that they're very comfortable with with utilizing these resources because like right now I can I can always just send out an email and you know hopefully most of it they read the brochure and most of them understand it they have a working knowledge of it just from being a trained professional but we just feel that the chief and myself feel that you know we can take it that one step further and actually provide some hands-on training so what's going to be incorporated in that training we're looking for community input. And we don't want it to just be, so the meeting on December 8th, just to, to clarify, that's that's more or less trying to figure out what we're gonna incorporate in this training. <coughs> and again, the community's invited. Any, anyone's invited to this because we're, we're looking for that input. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna you know, build on it. We don't want it to just be a one-time occurrence, like okay, we're gonna have a, you know, a training on, I'm just gonna make an arbitrary date, February, um, 16th at 9 a.m. and it's going to be four hours long. I mean, we, that may may occur, but w what we're looking at, we keep building on it so that we're just having, you know, so training maybe every two, three months, making sure that we're um, including all of law enforcement community and then just keep building on it. And, you know, there's some things that, you know, sometimes there's something new that's coming up. You know, the, one of the new things is body cameras. And as far as you know how that's going to apply when we're when we're utilizing it. None of us really know that because it's a you know it's new technology. We can envision what it's going to all include. We have a policy on it. We have a model policy that we're following. Um, but again, how it actually how it actually um, interacts when we actually put it into practice, we'll we'll have to see as as that time comes forward. But I, again, just as far as reaching out to the community. <coughs> I think that's an important factor that we're that we're transparent. We're reporting to the community. And we're looking for the we're sincerely looking for that input. So again, December eighth, if it works for you, otherwise I'll certainly update everyone on on what the progress is. As far as the actual training, we don't know specifically when we're going to have the training. It's just we're mm -hmm. we're trying to capture that soon. We don't want to procrastinate. We we think it's it's relevant and something that we get involved with quickly or promptly. I'm just curious, I mean, are there any mental health professionals involved in this since we're dealing with mental health issues, as psychologists or something like that going to be involved in this as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that New Horizons Crisis Center is made up of mental health professionals. We're also reaching out to the Normal Medical Center, reaching out to their okay. mental health. And they're, they're also invited as well, if I, if I didn't mention that earlier. As far as that, that list of people invited, you know, certainly includes them. Now, you yes. said that the crisis unit is housed or is, is located anyway in Mankato? That's what they would, as far as their office, um, okay. that's what they but would. the response call. team members are local? Well, I, I don't know specifically necessarily where, you know, where their zip code is as far as, you know, where they live. I, I think they certainly may have people from New Ulm here. Okay. But, you know, some I'm of them just, may I'm be coming from Mankato. In a crisis, you're not going to say, okay, you, you got to wait 45 minutes for the team to get here. Well, actually, that would be pretty good response time okay. for, for us in law enforcement. I mean, I can tell you, like, right now when we're in, and I think they'll even assist, like, with a, with phone calls, with ad, advice over the phone. But, um, you know, when we deal with a mental health issue, chemical dependency issue, you know, we'll get called there. We're, we're there within minutes. But, you know, realistically, for us to resolve that, that situation before what we say, you know, we, we clear, we're able to exit or, or leave that situation. A lot of times we're looking at, you know, two, three hours. And I mean, that's not unrealistic because, you know, we have to determine mm -hmm. now, is this person a candidate for detox? Or is this person a candidate to go up to the New Orleans Medical Center? And a lot of times how we're accessing that, those mental health professionals is 
through the emergency room. That's not necessarily the most efficient way, and we understand that, but that's, you know, as far as accessing that, that resource, that's generally a lot of times how we have to do that, where in a situation like this, it's just another option. It's not meant to replace anything. It's just another option, and, you know, essentially another tool in our belt as far as, as options. So we're excited about the, the future with that. But again, it, it, you know, we, we know, um, you know, even early on, we're, we're not expecting to answer every question that we're, we're going to encounter. Um, nor does it replace anything. It's just another option. Is this a model that other communities are using? Right now, there really isn't <clears throat> um, a model. I, th I think what you know, we're we're kind of at that time. And if you you know, you flick on Fox News or CNN, you're you're kind of seeing it. Um, things are really changing quickly. Um, I think from a local perspective, you know, when they talk about community policing, I think. In New Ulm, in Brown County, I think we've always benefited from that. I think we work very well with the community, and I think the community works well with us. So a lot of that stuff, I'm not saying we're, you know, we're in a situation where it doesn't apply to us, because it does. I mean, you know, it's, it's the same, the situations you see in Minneapolis or in St. Paul, same situations we encounter here, maybe not as, as much of them, but per capita, we're, we're certainly seeing that. But um, I think we're, what's, difference what what differentiates us is that we have you know close community contacts and i think this is just an example of that so you know, i applaud everyone that gets involved in their community and you know i think that's important and they again we don't have any complaints we i think we work very well with with the community and the community works well with us i think the community appreciates the proactiveness of something like this too absolutely um, so it's not just a reactive oh no it's, it's very proactive so. mm -hmm. i have a couple questions sure what happens in that 45 minute buffer between the crisis notification and the crisis uh you know the mobile crisis center arriving what happens with interaction between that time and are there any officers or individuals with the law enforcement center that are maybe extra trained um, to help handle those situations, or if that's a possibility? As far as in that meantime, you know, there, and that's a good question, but every situation is very different. And, you know, when we're talking about, like, chemical dependency and we're talking about mental illness, you talk to everyone that's involved with that, that's sometimes a fine line, sometimes that's actually just kind of a, a merge of the both. It's like, you know, did they rely today on self-medicating? Did they medicate too heavy? Did they medicate with alcohol or drugs or something like that? So every incident is a little bit different. You know, some of them are are dangerous. You know, some of them, that's why we're, we've been called there because they're having a situation and it's, it's um, volatile. They're, they're concerned for, for safety issues. So those situations from a law enforcement perspective are handled a little bit differently from you know, situation where everyone has a calm demeanor and we're just getting called there because maybe they're they're looking for some options. So, and you know, it's going to be case driven. Is is the response to that, Jackie? I, I um, everyone every case is a little bit differently, but in that forty five minutes and and when like like I said, when I say forty five minutes, by the time we call the individual, you're going to go through a and w when we're making those phone calls at that point, we have our dispatch center. That's our dispatchers are. You know, they're our partners, they're, they're working with us, but we have to contact them by radio so, or by phone. But initially, usually, we're dealing with the situation, we're trying to calm it down, we're trying to get it, first of all, safe. And then from there, then we're, we're probably calling in for something like this. And again, 10 to 15 minutes, even because they're going through a dispatch center, generally. They have their own dispatch center. Uh, they have someone answering the phone call, and they're like, okay, we're going to get this trained professional to call you back. But, you know, you're looking at, reasonably speaking, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I think that's actually pretty prompt. Mm -hmm. You know, so actually by the time we're actually talking to someone, you're probably looking at from the time of call to, you know, I think reasonably speaking, 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then from there, for them to actually respond, mm -hmm. you're looking at, you know, another probably from Mankato. Maybe they live here in town, but... I think anywhere between a half hour to an hour. And again, that's actually not too bad a timing as far as, as overall, because like right now when we go to the, if we go to the Noel Medical Center, the ER, by the time we actually, and I, again, we're very pleased with, you know, how quickly we're, you know, we're kind of ahead of the line. They understand the dilemma and everything. 
But I mean, it's it's reasonable for us to be sitting there for an hour, a couple hours. I mean, that's not unrealistic because you know we have we have to make sure that everything remains safe and this person's needs is is you know being addressed. Mm -hmm. So in that meantime, it, it really depends. It's really case dependent. But you know, we're always looking at options. Um, you know, actually, like this um, New Horizons Crisis Center, that probably is that option where it's like you know between us go here maybe considering going to the ER, it's just, it's another option because, you know, do we have to go to that level? Because that's, that's not necessarily always the best fit. And it's, you know, if it's not necessary, if we can handle it at the most conservative, safest level, that's what we're, that's what we're always searching for. Does that answer your question or did I just yes. kind of spin that around a little bit? <laughs> but, but yeah, it's really case dependent. Sure. Where do you think the commission would be able to fit in to give the most benefit to the community and what you're doing for training? <clears throat> you know, like this next meeting that we're going to have on December 8th, I think a, a big part of that is with the commission with, you know, whether you're able to attend and provide that input or when we update you providing that input. Because, you know, we're not, we're not looking for another meeting because, you know, I think we all have enough of them at the same time. You know, we're, we're really looking at that focus regarding this training because, you know, I'm going to have at this specific uh, training, and when I say I'm going to have, I'm involved with coordinating it, um, at least with that initial meeting, you know, but I'm looking for that advice from legal counsel, from our county attorney, from our city attorney. You know, what specifically do you think, you know, mm -hmm. how do you see this happening <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the big picture? Because, you know, mental health professionals, you know, they have a specific role regarding this. Um, county and city attorney, they have a specific role regarding this. You know, what the lenses they're looking through are a little bit differently. I mean, we're all trying to capture the same same thing as far as, you know, the safest treatment for for this dilemma or this this um, challenging situation that we're involved in. And that's that's the same as for, for law enforcement. But we all have little different lenses that we look through. And that's what we're just trying to capture. So as far as the commission, I think providing that input and you know just from a community standpoint what you know what you see as far as a challenge and how we can best address that <clears throat> how often do you typically get calls that w you think would require you to use the service like I, I know it varies but like like once a month 10 times a month or oh at least at least once a month i would say <clears throat> weekly you know it really you know you can get like three, four calls right in a row, right in one day. But then, you know, sometimes, you know, there's a little bit of a gap in between them. But, you know, I, if, if I would say, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year, if I would say weekly, I think that that's, a, that's pretty safe for me to make that statement. Do you have any other questions for Dave? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to remind the commission that three of us are going to be uh, in Minneapolis that day on the 8th with the symposium, the Human Rights Symposium, which, by the way, one of the things they will address is uh, police relationships with the community. And so it would be very nice if uh, some of you who are not going could attend. I know uh, um, Larry Sayer, Tim Friending, and I will be will be attending so what day of the week is the eighth it's Thursday, Thursday. Okay. Yeah. if I can uh, schedule time out of the office I will definitely be there on the eighth I'll try my best to break away to that day be great. <clears throat> shall we move on mm -hmm. Alma would you like to say anything oh, about the uh, education committee education um, I would like to mention that as a human rights activist, um, I am uh, pretty disturbed about incidents um, of overt racism, xenophobia, you know, this respectful uh, language toward women. Um, a couple of days ago, I saw a city that passed a resolution condemning some of this stuff and outlining some of the things that they believe that should be addressed. And it just occurred to me if that was something that uh, this commission could address, 
and if it's appropriate, and if this would be a good opportunity to educate the uh, public about what this commission stands for and what we do. So just thought I'll put it out there if the commission felt that it was appropriate to uh, put out a resolution, maybe. Is there a way to get a copy of what another community has? I will done? be happy to provide that. I will uh, and we don't bring have that. To reinvent the it, wheel. To reinvent the wheel. And I would look for more. I know there's only I saw one, but I'm pretty sure they're there with the communities there that are doing And I'll, uh, I can bring that. It won't be until January, but uh, um, we could do that. Thoughts? <coughs> Sounds good. I think it's worth a thought. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'll, bring, I'll bring something for the next meeting. Excellent. Thank you. I mean, do we have a mission statement, true, a yes. true mission statement? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that mission statement is very broad, and basically it's in the flyer. And maybe that's something we in need to flyer. fly. Maybe that's something we need to find, too. Fine. Yep. Yeah, I'll provide a, I think there's some flyers in the uh, office upstairs, or I can even get some. And uh, I think I have it in my computer. I can email everybody the flyer. That'd be nice. And uh, we could we could work on that. Well, I think there's no better time to be proactive about this mm -hmm. and if we can be mm -hmm. one of Agreed. the most proactive communities then it's only going to look good for drawing people uh, into our community knowing that we are all inclusive and, and, and welcoming. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Uh, good. Events committee, mm -hmm. any updates? Um, I don't know if anything else has been done on toward the uh, um, reception for uh, the Human Rights Award. I think Lori was working on that, yeah. correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys know if she has done anything? Mm -mm. I have sent her information. <coughs> um, I, I was thinking that one of the, I mean, right now everything is, so many things going on that we might have to postpone it until next year. Now, originally, that reception uh, took place in, in Martin Luther Day, Day, and it just kept moving forward and forward and forward. Maybe we have to wait for next year. We can go back to that date and have it uh, on, on that day, the reception. And um, I've done this many times before, this reception, and if uh, I would volunteer to just take care of the whole thing. If uh, Lori uh, hasn't already planned some stuff or talked to the community center, okay. so maybe just you and Lori communicate. Mm -hmm. see who's yeah, mm -hmm. working together. Yeah, because I understand the letter went out to the group that we we chose. Correct? They have been notified. She has the. SRP. Right. Yeah, that I sent her that information. Okay. She was taking care of that, yes. Okay. Any other uh -huh. updates? In a, in a somewhat related vein, um, we talked in the past about having youth representatives on this committee, and I've actually been approached by a young person who is interested, so if there's a process for us, we should probably consider getting it underway. Any recommendations on how you want that to proceed? <coughs> well, I believe it was going to start by my uh, liaisonship to the mm -hmm. Minnesota Human Rights. Uh, that did not happen. That fell through. So I think we're back at square one again with getting ideas Perhaps at that symposium, you can do a little networking and maybe yes. find out other communities who've done that process. It's a we could do fabulous that. idea. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Sure. And I'll invite them to start attending at least so they see yeah. what, good idea. what we cover. And I think that's the most important part. If they are interested, but they're also committed. Because, you know, sometimes they might volunteer and they just not come if they've never been to a meeting they don't exactly know uh, no what it's mm -hmm. all about so it be nice if they were sitting out there in the audience for a meeting or two mm -hmm. <coughs> have we ever invited the students 
Now, the only time we have students here is when we hand out the awards mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the kids go. But uh, I think we make it very clear that, that it's open to the public. All commissions are open to the public. But we can make a special uh, call to young people who are interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I was looking on the district website, and I didn't realize that there's actually a person in District 88 that is in charge of human rights. Really? I didn't know that. Well, hmm. maybe you I don't know, I don't know that either. Well, so maybe huh. making that connection. I believe huh. she is part of early child. She's an early yeah. child. Yeah. Yep. Right. She's coordinator for that. That's why I was kind of surprised to see the title as well. But it, <coughs> I just didn't know that existed. Huh. Maybe. So maybe we touch cart base. before. Yeah, yeah. Or cart before the horse. Or do you want to? Um, I can gather the information mm -hmm. from the meeting on the 8th first. Yes. And then we have our act together before we reach out. Yes. Okay. Next up, rescheduling or canceling the date of the December meeting. City Hall is closed on the 26th. <coughs> I think it's important that we do meet yeah. since we have a lot of things we spoke. Well, I think we're going to have to contact Lisa to see when an open date is, though, too. Okay. Yeah, and what's going on the 19th, the Monday before? I don't mm -hmm. It depends on what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess check that out and then shoot us all an email uh, okay. for a rescheduled date. We'll need uh -huh. to make sure that it's announced somewhere so we meet the open meeting law. Yeah, I think if we can all check that city web mail make sure we're going to have a quorum for it too then mm -hmm. right yeah. God, it's so, so i will get a hold of lisa about okay. an open date available okay. in december mm -hmm. and then send an email out to the commission letting everybody know yeah, that'd be great sounds good we would all sounds reply good. to let me know you know if that's a date that you think is going to work or sure. You know, we do need to table everything until January. Okay. When does the State League decide on the topics? Do you know that? Um, hmm, I was just thinking about that. I can't remember right now. Because if we don't meet in December, December. it's usually we need to get it going in January, January. and I'm wondering mm -hmm. if we need to yeah. consider that too. The, uh, I can ask. I, I can call Beth. I can call the League. I can let you guys know. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Well, it looks like we've covered everything. Madam, Somebody, Madam Chair. Oh, I excuse me, and I forgot a... about oh. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I even had it on my sheet, but okay. skimmed right past it. I'm sorry. <laughs> that made you serious about Would you like to step up time. to the podium? <laughs> Well, Lisa was a little concerned uh, whether or not you were going to be able to have a meeting in December. Uh, your normal date is no building open. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And many times when you have a different date, it doesn't work out for enough members, so we end up having a problem, and then I will have egg on my face. Karen, would you come up here for a second or two? As Karen reminded me last month, or was it the month before, that her six years are up. Human Rights Commission presents this recognition award to Karen Christensen for service to the community by serving on the commission as a member from January 2011 to December 2016. And we put today's date on it to make sure we have at least a date she was going to be able to be here, and you guys were going to have a meeting. So, congratulations. And uh, just keep this in mind. In a year, she would be eligible for another three-year term, if she would accept. Along those lines, I believe I have sent out emails to those of you who are eligible to return. 
you have maybe only got three years in, or maybe you were just appointed to fill out someone else's term, and their term may be up. I, I don't have all of the multitude of names and, and dates and places and commissions in my head, but um, I do know there's at least one spot open on the Human Rights Commission. The last time I spoke to the commission and said, I need help, because, yep, I know a lot of people. And some people would say, oh, yeah, sure. And then we probably would never see them again. So you have a better idea in your talks and in what you're doing. And somebody says, hey, what commission are you on? And you can explain a little bit about it. So if you can come up with a name, mm -hmm. one qualification, they must live within the city limits of New Orleans. Uh, this will, may go out on the TV, so if there's someone out watching this commission meeting and you had, do have an interest, contact us at City Hall and we will uh, attempt to uh, communicate with you and see what your interest is. So thank you much for the time. And again, thank you, Karen. I don't think you missed too many meetings except when you were on vacation, which was most of the time. No, I'm just kidding. Can I borrow your pen for a minute? Thank you, sir. Well, somebody move for the meeting to be adjourned? So moved. I'll second. second that. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>